when I came in 35 years ago to the <laughs> to the to Hollywood, um, yeah, nobody, yeah, there was no Asian. A, there was no Asian roles. B, no one even knew what a Filipino was. My whole career in the industry, in the entertainment industry, started at the ground level. And for me and my brothers, it was the actual ground. We were a breakdancing group called the Street Freaks in the streets of San Francisco, and Berkeley, California. We were breakdancers in the 80s. And then we ended up working as professional dancers for the San Francisco 49ers and the Oakland A's. And then we got scholarships to the San Francisco Ballet Company and started studying ballet, did Nutcracker and that kind of thing. That kind of professionalism led us into coming to Hollywood, originally as dancers and but then we got to LA, we realized Hollywood is a, is a film and television town, more than a dance town. And my mom got us in acting classes. And then you start going to school and then people start seeing you on TV shows. I think Wonder Years, like I'm come, you show up after the, you do the Wonder Years and people are like, oh my God, I saw you in the Wonder Years last night. Kind of strange. I mean, of course you do hook and that changes your life. Looky, looky, I got hooky. I mean, as a child actor, it's supremely important to have the support of your parents. You really can't do much if you don't have them, regardless of just them being there and kind of supporting you, just literally driving you to and from auditions and being there as a guardian for you on the set. And the reality is, you know, I love my parents and my dad was a telephone man and my mom was a mother of five and they didn't have a lot of experience in the Hollywood world. So they kind of gave blind support. There are things, you know, I, like my brother Darian, we both auditioned for Rufio, same day. There wasn't really kind of fights over what it was. You know, we do have a saying in the family, like, you know, you get what you get and you don't get upset. So, I mean, we're still up against each other for parts. <laughs> That's just how it works out. When I came in 35 years ago to, the, <laughs> to, the, to Hollywood, A, there was no Asian roles. B, no one even knew what a Filipino was. And the reality is the amount of times I've been on a quote unquote, Asian set in Hollywood, which hasn't happened. Hollywood was, is mostly a male, boys club, white males, mostly for the, the history of Hollywood. And like, again, I don't say it's racist. It's just, that's just how it was created, like a lot of things. But I've been very fortunate in my career to have a really, you know, I'm very proud of the, the roles I've done in the career. I've been able to carve out for myself in this wild industry. At 15 to the world, I became Rufio. And, and in a weird way, like just on a pop culture way, I've been Rufio in my life longer than I've not been Rufio, which is strange. If you can get one character in your life, somehow that's, that people are gonna care about, you know, in the long run, that's great. And it's a cool character. And it's a character I'm still proud of to this day. And, but at 15 and then in 1991, when we're shooting and they put me in a midriff shirt, skin tight jeans, when we're all wrapped and I'm wearing baggy clothes cause I'm a hip hop kid. It wasn't that cool to me. I was like, God, can I just be cool? So, I mean, when you're young, you're just kind of worried about image and who you, you know, who, how the world's gonna see you. I mean, when we were kids, well, I feel like we're a part of a fraternity that not everybody gets to be in, in, in this good and bad of the fraternity, but we're kid actors. You became quote unquote famous at a certain, at a young age. And, and all famous means is like, people know you that you don't know. That's, <laughs> that's it. Uh, but we did it in a very innocent time. We would go to clubs. And, uh, you know, there was one club that would let us in at underage and there was like these other teenage clubs and I was, this is the era, Leo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire or Jonathan Brandis. And, you know, we were all doing our thing. We were on the covers of like Tiger Beat and like Bop Magazine about, hey, like something. And it was cool. A little fold out poster of you or something that some girl has on the wall. That's cool. Now, these kids are like literally on the cover of Vanity Fair. And like people are very interested in who they're dating at such a young age. And you're like, that's that's a lot of attention. You know, it's hard enough to be a teenager. It was hard enough for us back then, you know, dating each other, getting into fights and trying to, and, and again, some of us didn't, didn't make it through. I mean, rest in peace. Jonathan Brandis is, was a buddy of mine and we, we kind of ran closely in, in the clip when we were coming up. Jonathan always had a dark side to him. So I understood that about him. He always was dealing with certain things and we all do. Like I said, fame just magnifies 
whatever issues you may have mental health wise or depression or things like that. And then it can also magnify things, you know, a lot of friends that were young actors that died in drug overdoses and, and, and we lost on the drug scene. It's always a cautionary tale, but I think now with mental health being such a, a bigger conversation piece, we have the ability to kind of talk about it amongst each other and get a lot more help to whatever that means to you, mental health. And then there, there comes a time in every young actor's life where they have to, you got to go, you know, you got to, you got to go live it for yourself. And if you fall and, 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 you know, that's on you, but you're an adult now, like there has to be, you can't be coddled. We can't be coddled forever. You know, time for you to go make, make what you can make out of your career. Wow. Look at you. I don't have a mirror to look at myself, but I suppose I can settle for looking at you. I'm having a lot, a lot of fun. Again, with Twitch, it's a whole new medium. We are doing these, uh, this scripted world, but in a live stream atmosphere, meaning that it's live. My character, I play this character named Xander, who, is, uh, who owns a tech company, who came in last season to kind of uh, be a foil to, to, uh, to Sebastian, who was the original owner of the original tech company in the original uh, season of Artificials. The gaming world is very diverse, but the way that even the programmers have created the characters in the world is is, is so diverse. Just for the sake of, of having, including everybody, and, and not necessarily including our, you know, our background necessarily ethnic, ethnically. We're not going into like storylines or background, but just to see a, a vast array of society represented in the show, which is really cool.